Well, we're not getting uh, the collection, or at least as of right now. Uh, but Marcus Dunstan and uh, Patrick Melton do have another movie called Unhuman, and we're going to review it. So let's go. Unhuman stars Brianne Sue, Benjamin Wadsworth, uh, Uriah Shelton, Drew Shield, and is directed by Marcus Dunstan. What's up, guys? Brand new 2022 review. Um, first off, shout out to Lindsay from Mother Mayhem. She told me about this movie. Um, it, the trailer does look really fun. It looks like um, a zombie movie. Uh, cards on the table. I didn't know that this was written and directed by Marcus Dunson and Patrick Melton also, his writing partner. They always do everything. I, I noticed that as I started the movie. And auto automatically, I was like, oh, okay, now they have my interest. You want to go? Because we can go right now. <laughs> We need to find weapons. If you get us killed, I'm gonna be so pissed. What do you suggest we do? I just had a feeling with those two writing this thing, uh, by the way, this is kind of a zombie movie, okay? But I felt like this is probably gonna have some sort of twist along the way. Because those two writers are sometimes pretty damn ambitious and creative and unique. And I definitely got that as I was watching this. Um, I almost wish I didn't know that they did it because I, I felt like there was a twist coming because you know what? The zombie subgenre of horror, really every facet of the, uh, the genre has been covered that you can think of. So if you're gonna make a new one, why not go for broke and try something different? And thankfully that's what they do in this movie. It's definitely not perfect. We'll get to the cons. I still think there's some value to this movie. Now, I'm gonna be very careful because this has a big like twist uh, uh, somewhere along the way. I don't wanna tell you where. I will say this is kind of like a, a modern day uh, mix of Breakfast Club as a zombie movie. You know, pick your, pick your fun teen zombie movie. That's what this feels like. And it really hones in on that like Breakfast Club aspect because you have uh, these characters that, you know, are all these different um, social archetypes that you find in high school. You have your jock, you have your geek, you have like your stoner, you have the quiet kid. It's all here. But what I like is that this takes all that stuff and kind of turns it upside down, shakes it. And the end result, you might end up liking the character that you didn't think you would actually like. So there's kind of some life lessons learned along the way, much like the original Breakfast Club, which is cool. So anyway, first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. Uh, Brienne Sue, she plays Ever. She's kind of our main character. She's just that character that uh, is in the background in high school. You know how you go to high school and you went through, you know, four years and there might be a person that you don't remember at all. We all have those. They just kind of blended in with everybody else. That's who Ever is. You know, she's not a, a, a like a big time popular kid. And her friend Tamara, played by Ali Gallo, happens to be a popular kid, which I like that they did this because sometimes this does happen. You can't have like a mixture of friends, one being the popular one and the other one, not so much. That's kind of the way it was for me when I was in high school. My best friend was a really popular guy on the, the football team and, you know, j kind of the jock. And I was just kind of the nobody, you know, I kind of stuck in the background. But, uh, you know, this class, they're all going on this field trip out into like nature into the woods. And I guess they're just going out there to do some kind of experiment or something like that. But uh, quickly, once they get there, uh, there's an attack and this like zombie type character gets on the bus and like bites the driver. And then the, the havoc ensues. So I'd say for a good portion of the movie, it feels like your standard zombie type movie. And it, they're on the bus and eventually they get off the bus and they end up in this building that looks kind of like one of those, um, haunted attractions that you that you see you know like when i was uh in the military every october we would we would take a house uh, one of the base housing units and we would you know deck it out to make it like um, a haunted attraction so people could walk through that's literally literally what this feels like now one thing that i think is kind of cool about this is it doesn't depend on zombie action yeah there is some of that but i think there's like less of that than what you would expect 
Uh, and instead, they try to focus more on these these characters, and um, you know, I guess what makes them tick because they all come from different walks of life. And because I told you there's a twist, you have to you have to build these relationships to kind of set up what the twist is going to be eventually in the movie. Now, one character that really grabbed my attention was Steven, played by Drew Shield. Um, you probably know him from Halloween 2018. He, he looks like he lost some weight for this role, but I like that he has uh, a little bit more of a substantial role in this than you usually see. Because usually he's pretty one-dimensional, kind of like the comic relief. And there's some of that in this, but I think they dig a little bit deeper into who he is as a character. And then one of the bigger characters is Randall, played by Benjamin Wadsworth. This kid really reminded me of like Brandon Lee. He looked like Brandon Lee in this movie. He's kind of the geek at the beginning of the movie. You know, he, he has like a slurpee thrown at him. And so right away you, you like this character and you want to, I guess, see where he goes along the way because of course he gets stuck on the bus. But let me just say, he's a major player in this. And as far as like, uh, the story taking some turns. Look for him to be involved in that. Now, let's jump into the cons. This movie's definitely not perfect. Visually, I think it looks amazing. Uh, and I talked about the lack of like zombie action. And if you're looking for that type stuff in a movie like this, then you might be a little disappointed. But I think the biggest thing that bothered me about this movie was they had way too much slow motion, you know? And I think they were trying to go for more style over substance, especially in some of the like the action scenes. And don't get me wrong, I like slow motion in movies when it's used you know, appropriately, but I think uh, it just lingers on for way too long and it's overly used throughout the movie. And there are a lot of characters in this, which is good, and they do spend a, a good portion on a, a, a number of them, but I think there might be too many characters in this, and so sometimes you can kind of get confused about Who's who? I guess maybe there were some characters that I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about, you know? So that's the big thing. But I mean, overall, I still had a good time with the movie for sure. Um, I would definitely give it like a high humdrum, maybe a low purchase worthy. I'll give it a low purchase worthy, okay? I'm feeling generous. It was fun. At the end of the day, it was unique. You know, it was original. It wasn't a sequel. So, I mean, I gotta give it that, right? And I like that Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton tried something different. And you'll know what I'm talking about once you watch this movie. I want you guys to watch this, especially for like the twist. And stay for a mid credit scene that is freaking awesome. So that's my review for Unhuman. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I think I'm gonna get a lot of mixed opinions on this one for sure. Um, also be sure to come over to Killer Flex where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free Fall Fridays. Follow me on Dum Dums and on my socials. Support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum them out.